The following presentation of the Mass is made possible by your generous support of the Catholic TV Network. The Catholic TV Network welcomes and invites you to celebrate the sacred mysteries, listen to God's Word, and in the Holy Eucharist, proclaim the victory of Jesus over death until He comes in glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I am Father Jean Oke Ike from St. Elizabeth Hospital here in Brighton. To celebrate this Eucharist worthily, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to hear the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, and the font of baptism have made new those who believe in you. Keep safe those reborn in Christ, that defeating every onslaught of error, they may faithfully preserve the grace of your blessing. And we make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. She was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord, and with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, she grew in numbers. As Peter was passing through every region, he went down to the Holy Ones living in Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas, who had been confined to bed for eight years, for he was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. He got up at once, and all the inhabitants of Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. Now in Joppa there was a disciple named Tabitha, which translated is Dorcas, she was completely occupied with good deeds and almsgiving. Now during those days, she fell sick and died. So after washing her, they laid her out in a room upstairs. Since Lida was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went to them. When he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs, where all the widows came to him weeping and showing him the tunics and cloaks that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter sent them all out and knelt down and prayed. Then he turned to her body and said, Tabitha, rise up. She opened her eyes, saw Peter, and sat up. He gave her his hand and raised her up, and when he had called the holy ones and the widows, he presented her alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many came to believe in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
the cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? Precious in the eyes of the Lord, the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done? The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of the disciples of Jesus who were listening said, This saying is hard, who can accept it? Since Jesus knew what his disciples were murmuring about, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if we were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. And Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer walked with him. Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. <coughs> the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord <coughs> Jesus Christ. Christ. Dear friends in Christ, the first reading of today tells us that the churches throughout Judea, Galilee, Galilee, and Samaria were at peace. And the Bible says they were building up themselves, they lived in the fear of the Lord, they were filled with the consolation of the Holy Spirit. And going back to what we know and from what we read in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, from verse 32 to 35, we also learn that a company of believers, the Bible says, they were of one heart and one soul. The Bible says that they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord. And the Bible says, and there was great grace upon them. Friends in Christ, there are what I refer to the trademarks of the early Christian church, 
and they are. One, that that church was built, and then they had a task of fortifying the community of believers. The second one is that they lived in the fear of the Lord. And the third one is that they had, full, they had strong faith, and they trusted in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And I bet you, all these, their trademarks, paved way for manifestations of the power of God among them. And this we see in what Peter did. And Peter showed the power of the resurrected Jesus by healing the paralytic, the man, the, the one who was not able to walk, and in raising the other person from the dead. The Bible mentions their names, the names of Jesus, the names of those that Peter healed. The Bible says Enas, a paralytic, someone who was bedridden for about eight years, was healed. It was one of those ways that God manifested his power to the worshiping community using Peter as a point of contact. The Bible recounts that he was raised, he got up and began to walk around. The second person is Tabitha, also called Dorcas. He, he was known for being a good person, for doing good. She was dead. And when Peter came, together with the worship, members of the worshiping community, they laid their hands on, on the one who was dead, and she came back to life. Friends in Christ, the Spirit of God was simply at work in the midst of the disciples. And why, I ask? Because simply they lived in the fear of the Lord. And there is this saying that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Today, in the Gospel text, Jesus tells us that it is the Spirit that gives life. And the flesh may not have so much to offer. The flesh does not have so much to give. And he says that it does not mean that our bodies are useless. It rather means that a healthy spirit makes a healthy body. And I ask you whether you sincerely believe in this. And so many people in our own time and in this age are degenerating into carnality, what I choose to call the carnal life, the life of the flesh. And I ask you, as I ask myself, are you one of them? Are you so much con concerned about mundane life? Are you so much concerned about bodily pressure, uh, pleasures? So much concerned about drinking? So much concerned about money? So much concerned about flashy uh, possessions, fame, and popularity? Are you so much concerned about this passing things of the world? If it is that all these I have mentioned overwhelm you, then this is that time to come back to God and to come back to the life of the Spirit. It is time to get back to life. It is time to make a firm decision to change for something better today. Friends in Christ, let us always remember that it is the Spirit of God that gives life, the flesh may not have so much to give. In the Gospel, Jesus concludes his teaching on the bread of life, that's when the, what we call the Eucharistic discourse. And he has spoken about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And this left his li listeners with different reactions. Some got confused. Some outrightly rejected this teaching and left him. They just simply walked away for them it was a strange teaching. But Jesus prompted his apostles and threw to them this probing and challenging question. He said, do you also want to leave? Do you also want to walk away? Jesus was simply inviting them to make a personal commitment to stay with him. Yet, they were still free to walk away if they wanted. But Peter gave an answer. He simply said, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and we are convinced 
that you are the Holy One of God. And for sure, Peter was right. There is no other very really sure way, but only in Christ Jesus and through Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, at Mass, Christians are invited to dine and wine with the Lord at the table of the Eucharist that is celebrated in memory of the Lord. And after the consecration, we are invited to look beyond the natural elements of bread and wine and to perceive the supernatural reality, which is now the body and blood of Christ. And St. Paul says, this bread is no longer ordinary bread, it turns into the body of Christ. The wine is no longer an ordinary wine, it turns into the blood of Christ. And at this celebration of the institution of the Eucharist, Jesus not only said, this is my body and this is my blood, he also added, which is given for you and which is poured out for the sake of many. In our world today, many have turned away from the faith. And the risen Lord looks up to us and wants us to make a commitment again to renew our commitments to him. And I ask you this day, do you still want to walk away? As we weigh the options we have, I simply advise you to fall back on the words of Peter by saying, Lord, to whom shall we go? We have the message of eternal life and we believe that you are the only Son of God. The prayer of the faithful. For peace in our world, may nation work with nation to end violence and warfare, we pray to the Lord. For peace in our workplaces, May pride and self-aggrandizement not poison our relationships, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in war as soldiers, civilians, and as refugees, may Christ embrace them in eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. May Almighty God pay heed to our prayers and grant us our heart's desire through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. To whom shall we go? Lord, to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of lasting life. Lord, to whom shall we go? Bread of life, manna in the desert. Pray, friends, that our sacrifice should be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. That the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Amen. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care, they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Uh, do fear and our salvation. At all times, to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the hosts of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is a ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, Overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim. Holy, holy, mm. holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we, we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Now the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we bless Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, you may merit to be coerced eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This day, daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom and the, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. 
Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, you take away, away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ you receive bring us life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We have worshiped God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord has invited us to the altar, and this great prayer has brought benefit to ourselves, the church, and the whole world. Please help the television mass to continue by sending a donation to Bishop Reed, the Catholic TV Network, P.O. Box 9196, Watertown, Massachusetts, 02471. Join us anytime on Roku, Apple TV, or Amazon Fire, or watch and contribute online at catholictv.com.